Hey everybody and welcome back. I've seen a lot of Stardew Valley tips and tricks videos, at least like two. And I gotta say, there have to be some tricks out there that haven't been covered. And instead of watching all the videos to see if I've doubled up, I've decided to just yeet my own obscure tips into the void so that you can judge me for all eternity if I did. There are timestamps in the video description, so feel free to skip the ones you know. And don't forget to subscribe if you had even an ounce of fun or learned anything today. Let's talk about some of my favorite tips and tricks and also kind of just fun facts and none of them are my favorite. Number one, if you are like most of us, you've experienced the pain of watching your tree fall into the various bodies of water in Pelican Town. After all, we fish up normal wood in treasure chests and driftwood flows into our inventory, granting us a fantastic three experience a pop. It's all gotta be coming from somewhere and that somewhere is actually you. Many of you probably already know that cutting down a tree from the left or the right will force the tree to fall in the direction that you are facing. If you didn't know that, well, I guess you got a free tip. But you can also influence the direction a tree will fall even if you have to chop it down from above or below the tree. If you stand slightly to either the left or the right of the tree, all the wood will land on the opposite side when you finish cutting it down. No need for an all your Stardew Valley pain in one video. video. Number two. So we just learned that the direction you face and where you stand are both important parts of tool use. And nowhere is that more clear than when we're fishing at low levels. I used to stand directly in front of Willie's shop, fishing straight south off the docks, waiting for his warm embrace to show me the way. But then I found out that not only did Willie not like me like that, but also I was losing out on an entire tile of casting reach. You see, when you cast to the right or to the left, you actually cast one tile further than if you cast straight up or down. I remember reading all the rumors about casting toward the lonely rock for gold quality fish when the game was newer, and sometimes even these days I'll see someone mention it. I have a feeling that people who were doing that were just casting to the left and reaching one tile further than they expected, thus getting higher quality fish than their fishing level normally produced. Obviously, this trick won't work everywhere because fishing zones are about more than just casting left, right, up, or down. So I've also included a handy dandy link to the fishing zones map in the video description. Basically, you want to be aiming for a depth rating of 5 when possible, unless you're trying to fish up specific treasure items, but that's probably a topic for another video. Number 3. As long as we are on the topic of fish, let's cover perks like fisher, angler, and even tiller, which increase the sale value of some specific items. You see, in a TikTok I made once, did you know I did short form content back in the day? I recommended that you wait until reaching fishing level five to sell your fish. Now, obviously I recognize that you might wanna sell some of your fish for crops or whatever funding you might need, maybe a backpack, but getting an extra 25% for your little fishies can feel really significant in your first week or so. What I did not know then, though, was that the skills that increase the value of sold items don't take effect the night that you get them. So instead of selling your fish the night you know you'll select fisher or tiller or whatever, save them for the next day. You can sell your props at Pierre's, your fish at Willie's, whatever, just throw them in the bin if you want, I don't care. But just give it a day, alright? Number four, in one of my modded series, I wanted to know if cranberries were still better to be sold as seeds than as raw crops. This used to be a nice trick back in the day, but the values have been adjusted since then. If you're gonna make jelly or wine, that's fine, and obviously that'll increase the value of your cranberry, but what if you used seed makers instead? I found out that standard and silver quality cranberries are better off being made into seeds than selling them raw. So let's just do a little quick napkin math. Say we have a silver cranberry, we took the tiller profession at level 5, and we're not sure whether we should sell the cranberry or turn it into seeds. There's a 97.51% chance that we'll get seeds from the seed maker, with a small chance to get mixed seeds or ancient seeds. If we do get cranberry seeds, we'll average 2 per crop that we put into the seed maker. So assuming that we succeed on getting seeds, tongue twister, that we can get 2 at a time. That means we can expect cash income of 117 gold per silver cranberry, or normal. Gold cranberries are worth 123 gold though with tiller, so they're probably not worth it. If you don't have tiller, then normal, silver, and gold are all better off being turned into seeds. Pretty cool. 
Number five. This isn't a tip so much as it is an observation that crops in Stardew Valley are really, really weird. You can water them with anything and they'll just drink it right up. Water from the pond outside? Sure, yeah, that makes sense. From the kitchen sink? Well, yeah, obviously that's no problem. From the well? Duh. Fountains? Actually, no. But what about the fish pond? Yes, they will happily enjoy your fish pond water. In fact, it's probably got some great nutrients. I want to say nitrogen, but I don't know anything. But what about from the ocean? Yeah, makes no difference, honestly. They'll happily convert salt water into tasty veggies. That means in the world of Stardew Valley, it would quite possibly be more efficient to use salt water to grow strawberries and then eat them to stay hydrated than it would be to create desalination plants to remove the salt from ocean water. Also, I guess the tip here is that you can fill your watering can up in the fish pond, kitchen sink, and places you might not expect. There you go. Number six. Following up on that tip about watering, here's an incredibly stupid tip for when you just have to get something watered, but you already turned in your watering can to Clint. Dang. If you're in spring, and I'm sorry to say that this only works in spring, you can buy rice shoots from Pierre for 40 gold. Rice shoots are really neat, because you can plant them near water, and they'll kind of irrigate themselves. But if you destroy the shoot, the ground stays watered. That means you can plant some rice near your closest water source, destroy it, and plant that parsnip that you really wanted for Pam's birthday. You're welcome, Pam. I guess. And finally, number seven. You have 15 more energy than you think. Once you've actually reached zero energy, your farmer will start to slow down. That doesn't mean that you have to crawl all the way to bed, though, because you won't pass out from exhaustion until you reach negative 15 energy. That's enough for like seven more rocks. And if you're almost done cutting down that tree, I mean, just go for it. Especially if you've leveled up a skill today. If you level up any skill, you'll wake the next morning with full stamina, regardless of how late you stay up, or even if you pass out. And bonus tip, because I see people bring this up all the time, you won't lose items from passing out from exhaustion. You'll only ever have items removed from your inventory if your health reaches zero. So stay up all night. Fish until you fall asleep and topple headfirst into the mountain lake. Linus will be there to save you. And he'll only ever steal up to a thousand gold from your pockets. Not bad. So there we go. Seven tips. Some that are actually even useful. If you've seen these in another video from someone else, no you haven't. And if you have an even more obscure tip, drop it in the comments for me. And I'll catch you in the next video.